Today, I'm going to be keeping it real simple. I'm going to do, it's basically going to be like a catch and cook. All right, so as I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to be doing uh, kind of a catch and cook here. Uh, I got the fish. I'm not going to lie, I'm ahead of this curve here. Uh, I'm going to clean them real quick here. I have a new uh, a new breading that I want to try uh, that I picked up at Lakeside Bait and Tackle uh, in Dullivan, one of my local shops that I go to, um, probably one of the better bait shops in town here. I think he's got everything, but he, he's got a new uh, breading that he had sitting out on his counter, and I wanted to give it a try, so let's see how it tastes. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, I'm going to be doing the cleaning portion of this and I want to give you guys some very 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 helpful tips here um, well let's start get yourself a bowl to put your fillets in uh, obviously if you don't have an ice maker or something like that like I do so ice right in the bowl and grab yourself some this is actually what I'm using this Craigers stuff but this is what you need this is, I buy giant things of salt because I clean fish enough okay so real simple add salt so anybody who pickles fish or does anything like that will kind of, they'll, under, they'll understand what I'm saying. So add salt to the ice, put your salt away. Salt, ice. All right, so you've probably seen this a million times. This is a walleye, uh, white bass, big yellow bass actually. So I always make sure, I always make sure that I have paper towels ready. Uh, something that a lot of people forget. You can do paper towels, or you can do uh, like a rag or something like that to get ready to clean stuff. Uh, I'm going to show you this so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, one thing I wanted to let you guys know is I keep them in the bottom of that fridge, and I cut them like that, if you can see that right here, to bleed them out. And uh, I caught these fish the day before, and... The thing is, is if you bleed them out and you put them on like ice, or what I do is I usually just put them in a bag and then put uh, ice packs over the top of them in the bottom of the fridge where it's the coldest. Uh, that's my spare fridge or whatever thing. It's just an extra beat up fridge, but it keeps things cold. So you can keep it overnight if you need to clean it like that. I was dead tired from being up all day catching fish. So that's going to help you guys in the long run uh, clean up, less mess, no blood. Uh, cleaner fillets, better food. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm going to teach you guys a couple things real quick here. So this is going to be pretty stiff. Uh, the bottom of my fridge gets a little icy. You can see there's literally ice on some of these fish. Uh, a big thing here is these fish clean a little bit different than this one. Uh, like I said, yellow bass, white bass. If you're ever trying to compare them, that's how you tell the difference right there. Uh, white bass tend to have these little broken up lines like this. Um, obviously this is yellow and then really solid dark lines. Uh, both are good eating. A lot of people steer away from them because they don't like them for whatever reason. Um, but you gotta clean them right to make them taste good. Walleye on the other hand, 
are a pretty simple go-to thing. I'm gonna just run through this. Uh, hopefully you guys can keep up. I have a video. I'll put it at the end of this video if you guys want, or I'll put it in the link in the description on uh, how to clean these guys more in depth. But I'm just gonna run through this real quick. Don't forget the cheeks on walleye. Like I said, I will put this at the end of the video or make that, I'm just gonna put it in the link in the description. Look in the description. Uh, it'll be the top link on how to clean walleye. I go into de you know, in-depth detail on how to do all this. Okay, for your, all you guys that like to go white bass fishing, this is a small white bass, so I'm not gonna get very much meat off of it. Uh, I haven't cleaned a yellow bass in a long time, but I remember that they're very similar. So with these fish, a lot of people try to do all this extra stuff with them. And the easiest thing I have found to do is that same cut that I normally do with most of my fish. Up behind the head like that. Get down to the rib cage here. So... Down to the ribs right there. And then get behind them. Follow that backbone out. Just like that. Okay. So now everybody would normally... I'm going to wipe up this so it's not on my filet. Um, always keep your knife clean. That's just a simple tip. But, uh, okay, so backbone down and out, right? So normally you would work your way off of this thing, but what I do is I just cut right off that rib cage, and then once I get to the rib cage, I just do this. So you see that, and that's what you get off of a white bass right there, is that, that filet. Now there's, I'm going to try and show you this guys, it's pretty dark down here, but you'll see this dark meat right here you have to float your knife so i'm gonna i'm gonna do the other side of this real quick but so like these don't these fish don't have a limit because they're supposed to be invasive or whatever and a lot of people don't like to eat them but they're good if you know how to clean them so same thing right down to the ribs get to the back of the ribs out the belly, along the backbone, out. So, done, done, and done, and then right along those ribs. And along that bottom part. I'm not talking, I can do this, that chunk pretty quick. That's it, I mean, the rest of that's junk meat, basically, and that's usually what makes it taste bad, too. Okay, so I'm going to wipe this up real quick, clean the knife off, clean my hand off a little bit here. This is why I always have these paper towels on hand and ready to go. Okay, so normally you would push down to the skin and go out. With white bass, you don't want that meat right against the skin. So you, I have learned to just let the knife float. And you'll see it's dark below that and that's how skinny that is that's why that's why you want like a 12 to 14 inch white bass I thought we were gonna get a bunch of them so I kept this one plus I got that yellow bass but so see the dark spot right there I'm gonna show you guys a little bit better that dark spot you're gonna want to cut out that runs along their whole outside, and that is what makes white bass taste like poop. <laughs> Basically, your best bet is to just cut that meat right out. And normally, if this chunk's bigger on the bottom here, I'll keep that, but I'm thinking about going white bass fishing. But you end up with this little steak. Uh, 
basically it'll be about the size of a, a fillet knife when you have a bigger a bigger fish but that's cleaning a white bass 101 it's pretty simple it, it's a little weird because if you're used to going down with your knife you'll continue doing that even even though you don't you don't want to and it takes a little bit of effort to control your knife while it's floating along but that way like you can you can do that and then that way you won't have a big old dirty fillet and like I said, you want that meat out of the fish. So hopefully that helps you guys clean some white bass because there's millions of them. Go ahead and eat them. That's why I always I always have to say like there's no reason to kill a bunch of other fish. There's pretty much an endless supply of white bass. They multiply like crazy. So all right, let's get to cooking them. Okay, so got the fillets. This stuff is what I'm using. What is it? It's Craigers. And I got the mild Cajun. Uh, I just, uh, I like Cajun stuff. But you can see right there, it says wet it and bread it. No milk or eggs needed. Uh, it offers four times the coverage. So what I'm going to do here is exactly what it says. But So I have two walleye fillets and then I have those... Uh, like four or five fillets from the the white bass and the yellow bass in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to deep fry one of the walleye fillets and I'm going to bake one of the walleye fillets uh, I'm just going to fry the rest of the stuff in here because they're smaller but we're going to see how this turns out okay so uh, Brad from Lakeside that gave me this stuff to try this this stuff he told me to do if i was going to bake it he said 375 for like 10 minutes i usually go by the thickness of the fillets and those walleyes are thick enough that i would actually would i, I i'm probably going to end up doing 12 minutes i mean it's going to be one fillet that i'm going to try and then as far as deep frying them i all go I, I go by like the golden color so like you're looking for it to start turning gold colors uh, if it's still too light and it looks like it's undercooked, don't pull it out yet. Okay, I'm not completely done with these, but uh, they look really good. So I'm going to try this real quick here for you guys. Alright, so this is the walleye. Mind you, I've never had this before. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy I tried this. Alright guys. You, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know I don't back anything that I won't eat or do myself. This is good stuff. So it's Prager's, and the one I got is the Mild Cajun. And uh, if you're around the Walworth County area in Wisconsin, uh, Brad at Lakeside Bait and Tackle actually carries this stuff. He used to carry, I think it was a Shore Lunch, and that's what I used to use all the time. But this, this is way better. So, and it's, it's, it's a lot more simple. So all I did was pour that into there, pull your fillets out of the water. So clean your water out, make sure it's empty. Throw your fillets in the, the batter, flip it over, stick it to them, and then uh, deep fry them. And this is what you end up with. Mm. Okay, I know you guys don't want to sit there and watch me eat a bunch of food, but the one in the oven is almost baked, so I'll come back and I'm going to try that one too, and I got to finish frying up a couple more, but so far, this is probably the best like pre-made breading I've had in a long time, and normally I make my own, so 
looking forward to trying the one in the oven next. Okay, I just pulled this one out of the oven. Let it cool down a little bit. Almost looks like I might have put just a little bit too much breading on there, but I mean, you can, can I focus? There you go. You can see it's cooked all the way through. Mm. It's really good at the hot. <laughs> So the baked is good too, but I can tell if I were just to put some of this on there. Lemon juice makes a difference. All right, let's try another piece of that real quick here. That is good and is healthier than that. So if you don't want to do the deep fried thing, that right there is really good. I mean, so these are this is the walleye chunks and then pieces of uh, so walleye cheeks, probably the best part of the fish you don't ever want to miss. Uh, like I said before, I'm going to link it in the description below, but I have another video on how to clean those walleyes really good so you don't miss any of the meat. That is white bass. And I'll tell you right now, I know when I eat that, it won't taste very much different than that walleye because of the way I cleaned it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed those. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed my little cook today. Uh, I know it wasn't too much of a catch because I just showed you a couple of those clips that, you know, where I got those fish from. Uh, that's actually going to be in Sunday's video. Uh, well, that will be Sunday's video. Uh, once I put it together here, I still got to do that. But I wanted to show you guys a new type of breading because I'd never tried it before. So it's one of those things like I wanted to try it and let you guys know if it's worth getting or if it's kind of like a gimmick thing. Because it says as seen on TV, you know, you know how that is. If it says on as seen on TV, you just can't trust it normally. But I trust Brad at Lakeside Bait and Tackle and he says he eats it all the time. So I figured I'd give it a try and... Turns out it's really good, so I'm going to be getting more of that. Uh, there's a bunch of different kinds. I didn't get it this time, but there's an extra crispy. Uh, like I said, I got the Cajun, and I can tell you right now, for a fact, the Cajun is money. It's so good. Okay, I'm getting impatient. i got to eat the rest of my fish. If you're not new here, you know what's up. But if you're new here, please just remember to... <laughs>